Hey, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply, and uh, this is part three of the Bougie Backpack. And what we're going to do in this one is we're going to start uh, prepping everything for dye work, then we're going to dye, then we're going to paint, then we're going to seal and resist, and then we're going to antique. So it's quite a few uh, parts to this video, um, but it'll all be one video on here. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I mask off parts that I don't want dye. Okay, um, this is masking tape. It's a very, very gentle masking tape. Um, unfortunately, this particular brand and type is not available anymore. They don't make it anymore. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask over my tooling area because that's what I want to not. Um, that's what I don't want to dye. I want to when I paint it. I need the the brighter colors to come through. So I'm going to put some masking tape over it here. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. So once I get the tape all the way on the tooling, I'll show you a couple of uh, quick cuts of what I do with my uh, my scalpel um, to cut off any masking tape I, uh, in areas I don't want masked, and then we'll skip ahead and we'll I'll cut the rest of this out. I'm not going to worry about all the background areas in between all the carving, um, just on the outsides of the tooling. Since I did a different background in there, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, that it'll hold a lot of antiques, so I don't need to worry about it. Uh, but what I do is, I take my scalpel that's very, this, this masking tape is super thin, so you can see the carving through it, and that's the best part. Um, but I'll take my scalpel and I'll just carefully cut around my tooling here. And uh, when I, I get enough of it cut out, then I just remove the excess masking tape. And then I kind of take my finger and I'll press down all the, the areas around the tooling to keep that masking tape down against um, the tooled edges. And that'll help to uh, seal out the dye when I airbrush. Um, I really only recommend this method if you're airbrushing. If you're using a dauber or something like that to, to, to color your leather to dye it, then um, really this isn't going to help you at all. Uh, my, when, I, when I used to use a dauber and stuff like that to dye, I would just daub as close to the tooling as I could and then get a tiny paintbrush and, uh, and get closer to the tooling. Um, but if you try this and you get a dauber up against it, like I promise you there will be so much dye that it will creep up under the tape and it won't, um, the, the tape won't do any, any good for anybody. Uh, so yeah, just gonna cut around this leaf here, and then once I've got it where I can pull this one strip of tape off, I will, and you'll kind of see what I'm, what I'm doing here. And the good thing is, anywhere that I accidentally cut my masking tape off that I don't want it cut off, I can just put a new piece down. It'll be all right. Um, another good thing, since this is going to be antiqued, it's also okay if, you know, I accidentally, like, okay, where this, the scallops of this leaf is, are and things like that, um, you know, if I accidentally have a little blank area outside the leaf that doesn't get, uh, tape on it, or, sorry, doesn't, it, it where the masking tape still is that it shouldn't be in a tiny little area, it'll be okay because the, um, the, the antique is going to cover that up. So, sorry, I'm not doing too good with my words today. Um, for this, uh, the airbrushing, we're going to use our new airbrush that we just started carrying, and uh, it's compressorless. Um, the entire airbrush is all handheld. So, yes, it does have a compressor. That's what creates the airflow, of course. But there, the compressor is built in. It's right there. Um, we just put these on our website, I think, last week. Uh, we've been extremely impressed with them. We, te we bought one and tested it out uh, pretty extensively. And then we decided that, yes, we would carry them. And the company that makes them even was nice enough to put our logo and stuff on them. So there it is. It's small, but it's there. <laughs> Um, all right, so I think I've cut out this one piece of tape pretty well. I'm going to take the edge of my, my scalpel here and put underneath it. And 
and then I'm just going to be very careful when I as I pull it off to make sure that all the areas that should be cut are such as that little area All right, so there's a small sampling right there of what we're going to do. Again, I'm going to do that around the rest of the perimeter of the flowers here, and when we come back, we'll be at the uh, little table that I airbrush with out on the out in the, the uh, warehouse. And um, I, you can do this any color scheme you want. You can do it all one color. You can do it all crazy colors. You can leave it natural. Um, but what I'm going to do is. Um, the interior of this and the lattice work and the interior of this piece will all be a lighter brown um, and then the rest of it will be a darker brown um, and then I'm going to paint the little borders uh, the, the whatever color I decide to do the flowers in I'm going to paint the little borders that same color and I think it'll tie everything together really nicely um, the main bag body of this bag is going to be a, kind of a medium gray color so I really have my choice of what colors I want to use and right now I'm thinking maybe a light like a sky blue would be a really nice one but we'll see once it's dyed I'll know I'll, I'll know what to what what I want to do because then I'll see the other colors involved so anyway um, we come back we'll be at the, the airbrush and we'll be uh, doing all that so All right, so here we are. We have uh, we we've done the um, the taping on this thing, <laughs> and uh, sorry, Doc keeps having to back up with the camera because it's got kind of a uh, zoom lens on it. Um, got my airbrush out here. I'm gonna do this bag in two colors. Um, the all the interior part will be uh, British tan, and then the rest of it will be dark brown. Now, um, I don't feel the need to. Um, to mask off the dark brown area first because honestly I can do it the British tan color and then come right back and um, go uh, go over it with the dark brown. I'll mask it after I do the British tan um, so that only the dark brown areas are exposed. Then I'll, uh, I'll dye those areas and then we'll pull all the masking tape off. This will still be natural. This area right here will be the tan and then this outer area will be the dark brown. And then on these, it'll be the same thing. Everything inside the border will be uh, the tan, and then everything outside the border is going to be the dark brown. And I'm going to paint the border lines. So, anyway, we uh, I've got some British tan already in the airbrush here. Get it going, make sure we're good, got a good spray. Now I'm just going to go ahead, and um, I've talked about it a million times about how much I love airbrushing uh, dye. It works so much better. Um, and I'm just going to go along and airbrush it. Uh, since I'm just worried about this center area, I'm not really being as careful as I would if I was doing an entire piece um, because I know that I'll get it even enough just doing it this way. The one thing with the airbrush is, though, too, I'll do it from every direction because tooled leather, um, you know, if I hit it from this side, then when I turn it around, um, things that the airbrush, you know, that were on the opposite side from the airbrush won't be, they won't have any dye on them. All right, so we're going to call that pretty good on this part. Now I'll move over and grab one of the other parts. This is the little yoke. I don't need to do any masking on it because again I'm gonna just do everything in this uh, British tan and then I'll follow up with the dark brown. I'll mask off and do the dark brown here in a little bit. And then the cool thing is too if I start out with this lighter color and then do my darker color of dye I'm not even going to clean out the airbrush. I'm just going to pour that darker color on top of this one and keep on going. Mostly because I'm lazy. Hmm. 
All right, so on this one though, I'm gonna do all the, the lattice work and the, the border there. And honestly, I'll kind of leave it a little bit uneven anyway because I want the lattice work to be uneven. I want it to be kind of spotty. I mean, I want it to look like wood. All right, so that's it. Now I'm gonna go back. Um, I'll dump out the excess dye in here and put the other color in, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and mask off everything inside. This is a double beaded border. I'll mask off everything inside the beaded borders um, because I want, to, uh, I want to paint those borders and I think they're gonna look really nice when I do. Um, I wanna paint them to match the flower and that'll kind of tie all the colors together. So, we'll be back in a few minutes, and uh, we'll have that masked off, and then we'll, we'll be spraying the rest of this down. Alright, so, went back and I masked off the center area on this one, and both of these. Okay. Now I'm just going to go back with my dark brown, and hit those areas up. I want to get good coverage. I want it nice and dark. Um, safety tips with an airbrush. Uh, when you're doing what I'm doing, you should be using a respirator of some sorts. I am not because then you couldn't hear me talk. I do this for you. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I look much prettier when I'm wearing a respirator. Can't see my face. Alright, I'm going to do this last one here, but we're going to go ahead and pause the camera just to keep the video shorter than it has to be because this is a big area and it will take me a while to, uh, to, to get it all dyed up. Alright, so here we go. I pulled one piece off just to uh, have a starting point here for the video. Um, I just pulled the masking off, so there's what we're looking at. Once that's antiqued with a dark brown or even a black, it's going to look amazing. Um, so when I pull my masking off, I usually use like a scratch all or something like that and just kind of grab a corner of it and I very carefully peel it away. But on this one, I'm excited. I want to see how the flowers did as well because they're still masked up as well. And so it'll be neat to see the layers, I guess you could say. And then um, next part of the video, we're going to start painting these flowers. And I've got some great colors in mind already, so we'll see how it goes. Shoot, that almost looked awesome just to antique it as it is and not even worry about colors. But that's no fun. Or is it? All right, so just like that, um, again, I got one more piece over here to do. Should all come off at once, I hope. If I did it right. Yeah. All right, so there it is. Um, we're going to paint the flowers and the leaves, and then uh, I'm going to paint these borders to match the flowers and leaves. And then we're going to uh, seal it, antique it, and then I'll cut out these squares in between the lattice. So we're going to be in my office next time we turn the camera on.
All right, so here we are. Um, I was gonna go over to the office, but Janie's over there running her embroidery machine and it's louder than I am. So we're still over here in the store. Um, I'm gonna use our uh, new Alpha 6 paints. I love these things. And I decided on the flowers, I'm gonna do white fading into sky blue. Okay, it's gonna look really nice. And then I'm gonna take sky blue and do a much more bold sky blue on these borders, just the, uh, the lines themselves, okay? And then afterward, this is all antiqued. It's gonna look amazing, I hope. Um, so time will tell. Uh, so anyway, the uh, Alpha 6 paints, I really, really, really like them. Um, the, the, they have their own um, reducer for the paints. And I really like their reducer way more than water. Uh, with When I was using the Angelus paints, I would just use water. So, I mean, there is a little bit more cost involved since we're having to buy their reducer as well. But honestly, um, I feel like it, it really mixes well with the paint. Stays mixed well with the paint in the tray. And then also, um, I, I think it spreads nicer on the, uh, on the project. Okay. So I'm gonna take both of these and I'm gonna put just a few drops of the paint itself in, in one of these little divots in my tray. And then I'm gonna put a bunch of the reducer in there um, to, uh, to really make it a, uh, I'm not trying to get heavy color on the flowers themselves. Um, I do want heavy color on the borders, but not on the flowers. So I'm gonna fill that one up and then I'm also gonna do one of these that's also, that's white. Because um, again, I'm going to do white fading into the sky blue. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm sure there are better ways. Do not get me wrong. I am not a painting artist by any means. But I'm going to start by, um, I want the white on the tips of the flowers. Or maybe I want it on the base of the flowers. I haven't. See, the last one I did, I did white fading into purple. But maybe I want white on the outside, purple on the inside, or sky blue on the inside on these. I don't know. I'm so confused. All right. So I'll mix that up good. Now what I'm going to do is, and again, I'm just going to show a little bit of this, and then we're, uh, we'll transition to where, you know, I'll, I'll do the other flowers and stuff. I'll come back and I'll, I'll paint the next parts. So I'm going to get my, my brush nice and loaded up with this baby blue, uh, or sky blue. Um, dab off the excess on my, my thing, my uh, paper towel, and I'm going to start at the middle of the flower working my way out with the color. Okay, and as the color comes off my brush and there's not as much color, that's, the, that's my fading effect. Okay, it doesn't have to be, uh, I'm just going to keep doing this until it's not got any more color on the brush moving out. Okay. Um, and I'll just do that all the way around the flower. Starting in the middle, working my way to the outside. And as the, the paint comes off, then there's my fade. It's all magical and stuff like that. Um, I don't like, when I paint leather, I don't like to do heavy colors unless I'm painting like a cartoon or something like that. Because I want you to see that it's leather underneath there. I don't want it to look all plasticky and like it was made in a factory. I want it to look like a real artist might have made it. Okay. And uh, I'm not a real artist, but I played one on TV once. So, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to do this going out. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the white. But I'm going to start at the end and come back towards the blue. Um, and that's how I'm going to do it. All right. And again, I'm going to, to, to save time. I will uh, go ahead and pause the video, and when I come back, we'll start working on some of the green of the leaves and the scroll work. Okay? So, until then, I'm going to keep on sitting here with this brush. Alright, so I finished up the flowers. There they are. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. Uh, when I started doing the white towards the blue on the first petal, I was like, man, I might have made a huge mistake. But I kept going, and the more of them I did, the better it looked, and I'm pretty happy with it. So now we're going to start on doing some of the vine work and the leaves. And what I've done here is I've mixed um, olive from Alpha 6 and also green. Okay, and I've come up with kind of a hybrid color out of the two of those. Um, and there's what it'll look like on the leather right there. 
and uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna anywhere that there would be a concentration of color, like say where the stem um, uh, coming away from the stem, that's where I'll start, and I'll just go lighter as I get to the, towards the outside. And then on all this um, the 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 scroll work, a lot of the time I won't even paint the scroll work. I'll just paint the leaves, but we're gonna try to paint the scroll work too. And I'm going to start with where, like, on the insides of the scrolls and work my way toward the outsides of the scrolls. And that's going to that's gonna give the shading effect that I want of a higher concentration of, of color in some areas and lighter in the others. And I, I really think this is going to turn out pretty nice. I've got some other greens that if there's not enough contrast, I might play with. And then I may take even some white and just do some tips on some areas of, like, the leaves and things just to really um, have, a, uh, have a nice contrast to it and, and show depth and stuff like that. Again, I'm, I'm not the most creative artist when it comes to painting. I've, everything I've learned, I've learned from um, guys like Jim Linnell and watching Peter Main's work and stuff like that. Uh, so I just kind of do my best with my limited what I've learned. So anyway, um, so once again, I'm gonna take, I'll get my green all over my brush here and then I'll get a lot of it off. And I'm going to start with this leaf right here, and I'm just going to start towards the uh, stem of the leaf, and then as I go away, there will be less color on my brush. And again, I, I keep it all light because I want the leather to shine through, you know, I, I want it seen. And um, tell you what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I'll go back and these like these leaves here I think I'll take and just highlight the very edges of them with either a lighter lighter or a darker color um, and do it that way I think that'll look really nice but other than that I'm just kinda dry brushing the rest of this leaf here which means that the brush is almost dry so after lots and lots and lots of hitting the leather with it it starts to, or the color builds up okay so really for lack of a better word, it's like a pastel. It's it's really light colored. It's not it's not all heavy. Um, it's just kind of the hints of colors. So I'm going to do that um, just as I described, um, and then when I come back, we'll do some shading with a different color, and um, we'll work on that. Alrighty, so there she be. Um, I went ahead with the green. I actually just did the entire thing in that one color of green, and then I took um, a darker color camo um, and just really went just along the edges of some of it. And then when I antique it, that's going to take care of everything else. Then I went back with my sky blue, um, a much heavier coat. I only I put mostly the, the paint and then just a few drops of the, uh, the uh, reducer in it. Um, so I could get a nice heavy border, okay? Um, I have not yet painted the border on these two pieces, but I'm going to do the exact same thing and paint the two borders on each of these pieces. Um, unfortunately, having to wrap this video up for the day so that I can go pick up my vehicle, I uh, recently was rear-ended and I am really excited to get my car back finally. So, um, until next time, I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers of Leather Supply. This is the Bougie, Bougie Backpack Part 3. And uh, in part four, we'll, um, we'll antique and uh, cut out the backgrounds, and we're going to start assembling this bag.